Uh, Hyatt has a really good program, uh, but then uh, Darren Hardy has a program uh, that's uh, called Living Your Best Year Ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you see the title in this uh, book, but it has like breaks it down by quarters. And then you can see these different components of where your life is and right. how you are, how you're, um, where you want to go. So I'm actually redoing this, starting a new quarter, uh, start for, for Friday for this next week and starting with the, the 10, 10, 10 challenge. And that's actually part of, of uh, the challenge is to do your why, like, why are you wanting to lose this weight or why is it important for you? And that's, that's important making those goals. We have that as part of the, the challenge. If you watched the video yesterday, um, I kind of reviewed a lot of um, Ricky's goals because I thought he had some good goals, but he really didn't have it measurable or countable, things like that. That's what we went over the SMART goals. What I want to go over today is something I got from Bob Alexander. Bob Alexander uh, did a lot of work for United Professionals and speaking for our consulting group. Uh, he was the top salesperson for the Zig Ziglar Corporation. He also created a program called the ICANN program. ICANN program is like personal development that martial arts schools are starting to do now, but he did this 20 years ago in the public schools. So the public schools actually did ICANN. ICANN was a kid's version of See What the Top. Zig Ziglar's book, See at the Top, was a kid's version of that. And one thing that Bob always says, you have to plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win, which seems pretty just obvious. Okay, that's three things. Okay, I got to go on. But I think there's a real lot to it. So that was my topic today. And I just have like probably 15, 20 minutes on this. <clears throat> but starting with planning to win. Planning is coming out with your written plan. So I plan on making 15 extra thousand dollars this year. How am I going to do that? Well, you have to start doing your plan. So just for example, if I want to make $15,000 more this year, I can either enroll more students, my students can pay more, or my students can pay more often. That's the only way my school is going to make money. So of course, we're going to try to get new students. Students paying more is um, now they have different options. So besides the, your regular program, you have an upgrade program. Besides your upgrade program, maybe you have a sparring team. I uh, have a weapons course. You have a CIT program. There's different ways where they're going to actually pay more than their standard tuition. Paying more often is in addition to doing an upgrade program and having their rates go up, they're going to put in an extra down payment. So those are the three ways to make more money. So my written plan would be how to do that. These are three ways to make more money. And this is what I'm going to do. That's my daily plan. Next thing is to execute daily. Uh, yesterday when I did the Black Belt Success Cycle, you know, know what you want, have a plan, and a success coach, take consistent action. Taking consistent action, I think, is probably one of the most important things. People start strong and they start making it or they stop making it, they're not seeing progress, so they stop ex execution. That's probably why 80% of the people who start New Year's resolutions by the 21st of January have already stopped. Um, they start off strong and they're, they're not doing daily executions. Um, benchmarks. Benchmarks is simply what I was talking with Dave Priga. Uh, Dave asked me what I want to do as far as losing weight, he says, start with 10 pounds. We had 10 pounds in 60 days. I did that. And now he gave me different benchmarks. Basically, it's like putting your breadcrumbs closer together. If you want to get a bird to go from one place to the other, a chicken to go from one place to the other, you put breadcrumbs. And the closer the breadcrumbs, the easier it is to go from one place to the other. So you have to have benchmarks. Review. Okay, how am I doing on all these goals? You know, I'm executing. What am I doing? And is it being affected? Effective. Getting counsel. You know, besides yourself, you should share your goals with someone else so you can talk to that other person. Try to get someone that's as successful as you or more successful than you, so you get some counsel. Uh, personal development. That goes along with your written plans because the more you know, the more you grow. Make sure you replan. Everyone has to have a plan B. Very rarely. It's like they talk about a plane taking off from uh, California going to Hawaii. It's not on course all the time. In fact, more or less time, it's off course. 
but it's kind of redirecting. Just like when you do your GPS in your car, rerouting, rerouting, you have to replan and again, execute daily. This is what I think is really cool. I always saw planning to win and preparing to win is the same thing. Preparing to win is huge. This is what's gonna happen when you make your goal. So for instance, uh, Johnny wants to get a staff. He wants to train three people, have a key staff. He wants to do this all in nine months. So he works, he's doing all this training. He gets his key staff ready and then he's got nothing to do with them. They got to that position, all of a sudden, he doesn't have a position for them. So you have to be prepared. So if I'm gonna get a key staff after nine months or 12 months, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna be teaching full time? Are they gonna be managers? Do I have enough students where I can pay them? So as you're working on your team, you also have to work on what's gonna happen. Uh, for instance, uh, Ricky says that he wants to be prepared by the end of 2021, be able to open a second or third school. So he's thinking about training staff. He also has to think, am I gonna be able to save enough money to open those locations? Is, am I gonna uh, be able to handle a lease? Am I gonna buy another building? So what's gonna happen when I fulfill my goal? So will you be ready to hire the team you build? Um, hey, I wanna get 200 more students this year. Okay, great. Will you be able to handle that? So besides getting to 200 students, do I have all my systems in place to handle that? What do I do in the first 100 days? No, 200 students, how do I make sure that they have a good transition from a basic program to my regular program? How am I gonna send good job notes? How am I gonna handle that many people? You know, I have problems now with 100 people. If I have 200 more and I get 300 students, how am I gonna handle all that? How am I gonna train my staff into taking care and solving um, parent problems? Okay, this is what I wanna do. I wanna save $50,000 this year. What are you gonna do with the $50,000 after you save it? Um, you're gonna get $50,000 to go, hey, you know, we're really cool now. Now's the time I wanna buy this, this, and this, or do you invest it wisely? Um, did anyone see uh, John Bassard's post on Facebook. John Broussard had uh, 14 schools and he had to close six of them in the last couple of months because of the pandemic. And he talked about as he's building these schools, he was always buying himself like sports cars and things like that. And his dad kept saying, got to save your money, John, you got to save your money. Well, good thing he listened to his dad and just spend all his money because now he just lost a good portion of his income in his future because of closing the schools of COVID. So if I'm gonna get $50,000, I'm gonna make $50,000 and save that, how am I gonna maximize that? Not only in investments, uh, how am I gonna maximize that in tax savings? Because if I save $50,000 and all of a sudden I have to pay um, cap, or not capital gains, but income tax on that, now I'm gonna be giving 10 grand away to the government. So what am I gonna do with that? So it's not just making the money, it's being wise with the money that you make. So again, this is preparing to win. I just threw this in because it's really true. Uh, most school owners don't hire staff because of, the, of lack of company money, because they don't put themselves on payroll. Most school owners take what they have left at the end of the month, and that happens to be their pay. So if they have $1,200 at the end of the month, they put that in their bank or their pocket, and that's what they live on. When you set up your martial arts school, you set up a corporation. The corporation does two things. One, it protects you from liability. Two, it separates your business from you. So now I have um, Greg Silva coaching. I have Greg Silva. They're two separate things. Someone sues Greg Silva. Um, they're not going to touch Greg Silva coaching and vice versa. Most school owners do that, but they don't put themselves on payroll. If you worked instead of for your martial arts school, you work for another martial arts school, you're gonna get payroll. When you get payroll, you're gonna budget yourself on that payroll. Martial arts school owners tend to use school money for everyday things. They go buy coffee and they use money from uh, the till in the martial arts school. 
They go buy lunch and bring a couple of staff members. They use their school money instead of their own money. So now what happens is you go to hire somebody you go, man, that's coming out of my pocket. Well, it should be coming out of your pocket because your school should be making its own money. The school's paying you part of it, but the school's amassing money in itself. So now when you hire someone, the school pays for them, it's not coming out of your pocket. That may sound confusing, but that's what usually happens. People go, I don't want to hire him. It's going to cost me too much money. Well, again, it should be your money. It should be the business's money. This is should be every person's goal. If you're not doing this 100%, is to put yourself on salary. Um, I'm just telling you how we, uh, the bakers finally did it because they were doing this. They finally put themselves on salary. Their school started making a lot of money. I go, great. Every quarter, let's pay yourself a bonus because if you have a corporation, you can pay yourself money and tax comes out of that. And then you can pay yourself a bonus, which only some taxes come out of that. So, hey, school's making money. Don't take it all. I'll work on your salary. At the end of three months, talk to your accountant and say, hey, I've got $10,000 in the school's account. What should I do with that? She goes, okay, take 3000 of that. Do that as a bonus. Keep the rest in there for future investments and salaries. I remember while I had my school in Coral Springs, I had hired two instructors from a, a guy up in uh, upstate New York, Steve Valley. I hired his, two of his guys to move down to Florida. This is before a big hurricane. We had a hurricane. I'm talking to the instructors. They go, hey, the best instructor at La Valley's moved down to Miami, and he, he was a model. He's not modeling. Now he's cutting down trees. So I called. This guy's name was Roger Crawl. He's a uh, MMA trainer now. He came up to my school during the graduation night. He performed, and this guy was just totally amazing. I said, I got to hire this guy. Well, if I was in a position where I had to use my money, I would have never done that. But the school was making money, so I was able to hire them. So all of a sudden, opportunity came. Luckily, the opportunity also came when I had the means to hire him. And it was huge. It's probably one of the things that catapulted me because he was just such a great, it's such a great martial artist. Um, and it still is. So when he's thinking about your goals, just think, I'm going to make all these goals, you know, so what's going to happen after I make it? Am I prepared to handle either making more money, getting more students, or getting some staff? Next thing is to expect to win. I'm sure a lot of people have read books on the law of attraction, being positive. I also think you have to have reality checks. Um, when Scott Axman first started his uh I uh, think his uh, blog or his uh, Facebook site, The uh, Mastery of Positive Thinking. I said, hey, that's really good, Scott, but no, not everything's positive. He goes, yeah, but your base has to be positive. You have to realize there's uh, a reality in there, but you have to even look at reality with a positive mindset. Uh, Jesse Elder posted something on Facebook today. He goes, uh, I smell smoke and I see fire, but you know, until the fire department comes, I'm not going to worry, worry about my house. Well, you know, that's not really reality. Uh, so if you're doing your goals, you're preparing to win, and you're having challenges, positive thinking is important, but uh, facing those realities with a plan is also important. Because as you go from plan A to plan B, obstacles are gonna come in your way, and don't just think they're gonna go away by ha having a positive uh, attitude. Just make sure that you're ready to dig your heels in, face adversity, and make it through it, but face them head on. Nick Okinas once told me, he goes, I would rather have a crisis than a sloppy situation. Uh, when he were doing this, one of the schools that he was consulting had two employees that had the potential of being good, but they were kind of lackadaisical and weren't really putting any effort. But the instructor or the owner didn't want to go through the uh, challenge of training new people. So he kept them on. So he really had a sloppy situation. He had guys that would come in late. They wouldn't put 100% effort, in, effort into class. And so he was faced. Do I keep the sloppy situation going or do I just fire these two guys? I'm going to have a crisis. 
but I'm, now I'm going to have to uh, hire someone or train myself better or get in there myself and do it. So I think it's really important when you have a situation like that, sometimes it's more expensive to keep an employee than to lose that employee and to be ready to take on someone else. So again, you know, I'd rather have a crisis than a sloppy situation. And when you expect to win, you know, these things may creep in, creep in and you have to make reality checks. So this whole thing that we've done on goal setting, just to review, uh, we started with Tony Robbins and we talked about setting goals in four uh, different areas. One is uh, your personal growth. Two is toys and adventure. Three was co uh, contribution. And four is business growth. They're all important. I don't even know which one. I say which one of those four is more important. I don't know. Because if you contribute a lot, you're going to attract more business and your business goals are going to go up. So they're, they're all important. Then once we said that, okay, that's great. Now I've got them. I want to be smart about it. So let's be specific, measurable, make sure they're attainable, relevant, and time. Uh, when we started this two weeks ago, the whole idea was to have four specific goals for this year. And so the measurable is one year, or the timed is one year. And then, you know, setting goals is one thing, planning out your goals is another. Has anyone ever... Uh, done a vision board. Vision board would be, when I do mine, I just take sticky notes. I take sticky notes like this, and when I do my plan, I put my plan out in a timeline, and I just put them on my wall by my desk. Uh, some people actually take pictures of their final goal and just have a, a picture board. I like my vision board. So each one of these stickers could be 12 of them, and they're all a timeline of where I want to be within the 12 months. Could be 12 tasks. These are the 12 tasks I want to do. This is my planning. I like having things written in the book. I like having things on my computer, but I like it even better when it's a visual. I was uh, watching a video of Jesse Elder. He was uh, planning a new program and he was working out of a hotel and he showed a picture of his hotel window and it was all covered with sticky notes. So he had his plan for his new program in sticky notes. So now it's a visual. When it's a visual like that, every time you're sitting at your desk or you're working, you're looking not only the task at hand, but you're looking at the big picture. What I'm going to be doing over this period of time. So I could have what I'm going to do each month for 12 months. I could have my measurables so I know where my benchmarks are going to be. I mean, if I can't do it all myself, I'm going to put stickers down on who I'm going to get to help me. It may be things like, you know, all of a sudden someone said, hey, this is a really good book. You should read this book next. I'm going to have the books I'm going to read. But have some type of vision board where it's always in front of you. Does anyone want to contribute anything? Josh, I know you've done a lot of work on this. You've done a lot of work with Scott. Anything you want to, to add or anything you want to ask? I think I would add something from that Scott talked about, which is the how question versus a why question. You know, if you, if you say something like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do this? How am I going to accomplish my task of saving $50,000? Or how am I going to lose a hundred pounds? That has what Scott talks about as a negative energy, right? You you just have that like negative weight holding you down, and just like you run into all these these realizations that well I can't do that. How am I going to do that? I can't. How? I can't. How? I can't. But if you say why, if you identify why that's important, why you want to save fifty thousand dollars, why you want to buy a a new boat, why you want to go on a trip, and those why things and why they're important. Uh, just like Simon Sinek says in his book, the, I start with why, is once you get that why, everything else is m so much more powerful because you're able to connect it with something deep that you can then execute on daily. You know, and then you can go back and look at something when it's in your review and you're saying, okay, why do I want to do this again? It's getting really hard. 
and it can help power you through those times where it is hard. And it can power you through the points where you need to replan. Uh, excellent advice. Um, yeah, I, when I first heard that, it was a few years back, it was called the golden circle. So the inside of your golden circle is your why. And then the next circle out is what, and then it's how you're going to do it. So this is what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to impact more lives. How am I going to do it is I'm going to do school talks, this, this, and this. So I become more of a lighthouse to get out in the community. So yeah, agree hundred percent. Thanks. I like the positivity aspect. I feel like this year is, it was very hard to be positive. So I, I guess the reminder of being positive and reminder of having a plan, I'm very honest. Like over here, it's like, I just wanna ride the wave until I can do things, but yeah. I realize I need to change my reality and be positive and know that if I'm positive, I can get my goal if I work hard for it. Yeah, and it's positivity. And this year was all about shifting, you know, being ready for that plan B. I was really uh, surprised when I was talking to Kemp Brown. You know, he's, he's doing school talks. I mean, he's doing Zoom school talks, but he's in the school system. He's doing exercise for the school. That, that's like crazy. Um, I know um, you guys are still doing your Zoom. I was talking to a guy from England yesterday. He was all motivated and things like that. And today found out he's going to shut down again. So this guy's going like crazy. He got shut down, started going like crazy. He's getting shut down again. So he's got to get back into his Zoom and just make things happen. What you can't do is just give up 100%. Okay, guys. I guess that's it for uh, 2020. Hopefully we have some some better news. So you know it's not gonna change right away. So <laughs> hopefully we have some better news. I, I had a dream last night that I got the COVID shot. I was like the last person in line. It was crazy, crazy dream. <laughs> dream. Uh, are you still meeting people tomorrow or no? Are you yeah. off? Yep. I think we have a meeting tomorrow. All right, so we'll meet tomorrow. All right, okay. sir. Perfect. Take care. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir.